He's just going around collecting a bunch of mutants, and then at the end he blows up the world. But that said, though, I mean, it's, it's, <laughs> <laughs> it's, kind of, it's, it's, sort of, it's a really ambitious... Checking that's the whole script. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. I've got to say I'm a little bit over Magneto. I mean, I love Magneto, and I think Fassbender's really good at it. He brings a real kind of gravitas to it. He's a proper, proper actor, proper acting. But there's a single tear, isn't there, yeah, at exactly. one point, <laughs> yeah. where he's like, I weep for all of the metal that I've <laughs> bent. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's the thing though, there's so many X-Men, so many great characters in it who get like three lines and then we spend half a movie watching Magneto get sad about humans again. Like he's yeah. already angry at humans, we kind of know that. Yeah, I took issue a little bit with the, um, with the sort of wife and, and child mm. set up. Firstly, like that doesn't seem like the sort of lone wolf Magneto that, mm. we, that we've come, come to love. Like if he's going to develop in that way and become attached to some other humans, you sort of want to watch that happen. It's a shame mm. for it to sort of happen between the movies. And then of course, the two of them just get fridged immediately, sort yeah. of like killed purely to sort of further his character motivations, which is rubbish, especially considering that his daughter appeared to have the coolest X-Men power to ever, talking to the animals. <laughs> She's got like a sort of Snow White thing going on. Yeah. The soundtrack's amazing. You've got like early heavy metal, you've got Metallica, you've got Venom, um, and then you've got the Eurythmics and people like that. I love the kind of like the punk East Berlin yeah. thing. That was really cool. Yeah. And the yeah. clothes are amazing, like uh, Jubilee's yellow jacket. I mean, that's the time that that jacket is going to work. That yeah. looks amazing. It's a real shame that Jubilee doesn't have anything to do at all. That's a bit of a wasted opportunity. Hopefully she'll be in the next one. But uh, Nightcrawler's like uh, uh, Thriller, Michael oh, Jackson's yeah, yeah, jacket, that's yeah. amazing. It kind of carries, it spills over a little bit too much. There's uh, Professor X is wearing the kind of purple V-neck jumper throughout the film and it's fun through most of the film but in the end when he's like in the kind of big psychic showdown he's still wearing, <laughs> he's still wearing a purple, purple v-neck yeah. and that yeah. doesn't, quite, doesn't quite work but apart from that I love the 80s setting. I didn't think too much of Apocalypse. Yeah, which is a shame because Oscar Isaac is great and he's had a great he's year great. with uh, last year with Ex Machina and, and The Force Awakens. It's it would have been great Poe Dameron. Him. Exactly, and it would have been great to see him as a proper villain. Um, but he's under all that makeup, and I've got to admit, right, I didn't ever really quite know what he was doing. It's like sometimes he's talking like he wants to destroy everything. Yeah. And, and then sometimes he's, he's talking like he wants to create a world where only the most powerful mutants are there. But that also felt weird, because it's mm. like, does he really want to sort of share power with Magneto and all these other sort of powerful... Like, why is mm. he making mutants more powerful if he's like, wants to sort of dominate everything? Mm. I mean, I'm sure that it made sense at some point. Yeah. Uh, but. I didn't really feel like I knew what he wanted. Exactly, it's, it's part of that problem of there being so many people crammed in. Do you think this is a genre-wide issue? Because yes. you've got, uh, Apocalypse is a little bit dull, and you've got sort of Thanos coming into, uh, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe, mm. and then you've got, like, Darkseid being teased for the DC Universe, mm. and these are all, like, planet-sized, ambiguously powered world destroyers. Mm. When you actually watch these movies, I think the only villains that have really come out of it well that people remember are the ones who aren't really a physical threat. They're not a big planet-sized threat. They're the kind of the ones who have personalities and character, like Magneto, like Loki, and people like that. Like and the Joker. Like the Joker, like exactly. Like Green Goblin. Yeah. The ones who get inside your head. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not with you so much on Green Goblin, but... Uh, He's inside <laughs> his head. He's inside his head, yeah. I didn't think that Apocalypse was as good as Civil War mm -hmm. uh, in any regard, really. Mm -hmm. But what I do like is that it feels like a credible and different mm -hmm. cinematic universe to Marvel's. Now you've got the X-Men universe, which at the end of the film, it's sort of set up as like, now we've got this whole new team and they're, and they're sort of rooted in the 80s, which mm. is quite cool. And there's loads of them and you sort of know who they all are. I think it establishes a viable alternative mm. cinematic universe to Marvel's, which I don't think DC has quite managed yet because I yeah. don't think Batman vs Superman was as successful as mm. X-Men. I think yeah. Civil War, X-Men, BVS Dodge. It's controversial, <laughs> I know, but yeah, that's, exactly. yeah, yeah. Best thing in it. But Quicksilver is the best thing in it, yeah. Yeah, totally. He's best thing in the last film. Best, best thing in the last film, film, best thing in this film. He has the best sequence, which is the slow-mo mansion ex exploding, where he's, yeah. oh, it's just, oh, it's so good. Are we going to be introduced to, like, a third 
uh, Summer's, Summer's brother, brother. <laughs> who, who like can shoot beams from somewhere else. <laughs> What, like his elbow or something? His ears. His ears. <laughs> yeah, I have to wear these earmuffs all the time, but then when, when it comes to the fight... <laughs> <laughs> but even like, you can never look at what he's aiming at, so he just has to be like, it's roughly over there. <laughs> he has to be like, Quicksilver, put me in the middle of the, the two bad guys. Yeah, and then, yeah, and then... <laughs> <laughs>